Are all fascia alike? You hear folks use the word fascia, but do we know exactly what kind of fascia they're talking about? Oftentimes, folks talk past each other because they're thinking of different fascia. This is plural. So I'm going to describe three types of fascia. They're all quite different. One, two, three. First one, superficial fascia. I love superficial fascia. I think it's really cool. So superficial fascia is superficial because it's at the surface. So there are many words for superficial fascia in our anatomy vocabulary. Right? One of them is subcutaneous adipose, meaning the fatty layer underneath your skin. Uh, another word for it, the panicula. So we have different words for superficial fascia. And some folks in different countries may even use a different word altogether for the adipose layer. And, and that's fine. There's a lot of variety out there. And I'll do another video on that. But for now, let's just say that one fascia, right, fascia being um, an aggregate of, of connective tissues that can be, that, that cover and wrap and can be dissected as a sheet, right? And that's maybe a definition of fascia uh, that we share. So superficial fascia is definitely an aggregate of connective tissue that can be dissected as a sheet lifted away from the body. And Henry Gray, kind of a, the, the progenitor of the English anatomists, that's how he talked about superficial fascia. So superficial fascia is lobular and, and fatty, and yet it's a wrapping around the whole body. So that may not be your first idea. Uh, people say, well, is, is fat fascia? It's like, well, um, adipose tissues are connective tissues, and some of them are sheet-like. So yeah, I'm gonna say, <laughs> Fat can be fascia or adipose, right? Now, what about number two? Well, let's call it, we have superficial fascia on the surface. What's deeper down? We're going to call it perifascia. Okay, so perifascia. Perifascia. Peri, around fascia. So it's kind of a fascia that's around other fascia, or maybe we could say the other fascia are embedded in perifascia. Perifascia, unlike superficial fascia, which is kind of fatty and lobular, perifascia is more slippery, translucent, and membranous. Um, if the lobular configuration of superficial fascia is like a bunch of lobular bubbles of fibrous matter, with adipocytes in them, then the perifascial fiber organization is a more loose organization of collagen and elastin fibers that are little uh, multi-directional. I might even say that the organization of perifascia is chaotic. Now, I can cut it into sheets. I do it on, on video many times on my website uh, and in other videos on YouTube, uh, perifascia um, then is quite different, right? Are all fascia alike? The answer is no, right? Superficial fascia is lobular. I might even call the organization of perifascia felted. You know how felt? You just take a bunch of wool and you kind of do so with it and, and then you can make a hat or, or a toy or something like that. Um, perifascia, um, looked at under a microscope, has a very chaotic fiber organization very loose fitting um, that allows it to be distensible. It permits for differential movement. So superficial fascia, perifascia, and then we're going to say, this is a big summary word here, deep fascia. So we'll call deep fascia, again, spatially, it's, it's further into the body, deep fascia, right? Deep fascia is, is generally underneath superficial fascia and perifascia. Uh, deep fascia we can also call dense, regular, fibrous fascia. And I think this is what people are mostly thinking of when they think of deep fascia. They think of you know, the lumbar region here uh, where there's very silvery uh, tissues or they think of the IT band or maybe the plantar fascia on the bottom of the foot. Um, so deep fascia's organization is quite different from superficial fascia and perifascia. Deep fascia organizes itself in, in, in lines and layers. So 
like this, like so. We'll have uh, lines, and and it literally makes a fabric grid. Now, it doesn't only make this grid. I'll talk about that in another video. But for now, let's just say deep fascia is a dense, regular fibrous fascia where the fibers are organized in sort of a recognizable pattern uh, of, of order, um, something like this, as opposed to something like this or something like this. So are all fascia alike? No. We can see that they're quite different based on the different fiber organizations of the collagen. And if we dry, drill further deeper into the discussion, we find out that superficial fascia, perifascia, and deep fascia not only between each other are different, but within the range of superficial fascia tissues, within the range of perifascial tissues, in the range of deep fascia, I spelt that wrong, sorry folks, of deep fascia, we're going to find variety in these basic configurations of the tissues. So this is just a, a, a hello to um, the variety of fascia that we witness in the human body. And I think I'll do other videos. It'll be fun uh, to kind of explore the differences within each category so that we have an even bigger picture of the biological fabrics of which our body is comprised. If you'd like to learn more, visit me at gilhadley.com. There's a ton of stuff there. Enjoy.